Hi Space Cats, I'm Dr. Maggie Lou. welcome back to my channel. The year is 2023 and within the past two weeks, two giant holes have appeared on the surface of the sun. These holes are 20 to 30 times the size of the earth, so they are massive. But what does that mean for us? Let's find out. Coronal holes are areas of the sun's corona which are the outermost part of the sun's atmosphere. Here, magnetic field lines are open rather than closed. This allows for the escape of charged particles, things such as the blasting of rapid solar winds into space that can reach speeds of 800 kilometers per second. Although they're called coronal holes, they're actually not physical holes on the sun's surface. Instead, coronal holes have a lower temperature, which makes them less luminous, in particular when viewed in UV or X-ray wavelengths, um, compared to other parts of the sun. This creates the appearance of them being black. These regions can persist for several solar rotations, which is approximately 27 Earth days. But note that coronal holes are distinct to sunspots. So sunspots, which you've probably heard more often, are like coronal holes that are darker and cooler than the rest of the sun's disk, but they form in a lower layer of the sun's atmosphere, the photosphere. And this makes them more easily observable, so you could see them with the naked eye, but I don't recommend you doing so. The corona, on the other hand, is a million times less bright than the photosphere, so it's much harder to see, and that's why we need to use UV and X-ray wavelengths. Coronal holes are not rare. They're a regular feature on the sun's atmosphere, and they're known to appear during phases of the solar cycle. So recall that a solar cycle is approximately 11 years of activity on the sun, which is typically characterized by changes in the number and the sizes of sunspots, as well as other features such as solar flares and coronal mass ejections. During periods of low solar activity, such as during the solar minimum phase of the solar cycle, coronal holes tend to be more numerous and more concentrated near the sun's poles. So that's okay because it means that they tend to blast their charged particles into outer space without affecting us, so they're not directed at us. However, as the sun approaches its peak in activity, known as the solar maximum, coronal holes can appear at lower latitudes and grow larger, which could affect us. Thankfully, the effects of coronal holes, even very large ones like the ones we're seeing now, are mild and they shouldn't cause any damage to infrastructure, although it's likely they will trigger some particularly bright auroras, which we've been seeing recently um, and much of this year already. We know that coronal holes are common during the solar minimum, but the fact that two have appeared whilst we approach the current solar maximum could be concerning, because it's unusual. And these concerns perhaps were justified this week when the Earth was subjected to a powerful solar flare emitted from a sunspot. It was so powerful that it knocked out radio communications across Southeast Asia, Australia and New Zealand for about an hour. This week's solar flare was already the seventh one this year, and now scientists are concerned that it could be just the beginning of even more rough space weather events to come, especially since we still haven't reached solar maxima yet. Solar flares occur when magnetic energy that has built up in the sun's atmosphere is suddenly released. They are classified according to their strength. The weakest ones are B class, followed by C, M, and X. Similar to the Richter scale for earthquakes, each letter represents a tenfold increase in energy output. So an X is 10 times as strong as an M and 100 times as strong as a C. Large flares can release enough energy to power the entire United States for a million years. And this recent flare was an X flare, also known as an X class solar flare. These are the most powerful classification of solar flares, with energy releases that can be equivalent to billions of atomic bombs. During the last solar maximum in 2003, things got so bad that people traveling on airplanes were actually subjected to small doses of radiation. But a big solar storm could easily lead to worldwide blackouts and an internet apocalypse. The next solar maximum is estimated to be in July 2025, where we expect to have a peak of 115 sunspots. The havoc this is expected to play on satellites, radio, and more is going to grow over the coming months. 
Thankfully, our space agencies are constantly monitoring the sun from all angles and across many wavelengths to provide us with the most accurate predictions and advanced warnings of any incoming storms and flares so that we can prepare for them before they hit. These are things like shutting down sensitive hardware before any flares hit. We have many startups from zero error systems working on radiation protection for semiconductors to Celestial who have made solar cells that can self-cure from radiation damage. All very exciting stuff and so much still to learn and improve on. But that's all for this week's video. If you enjoyed it, please don't forget to leave me a like, share and subscribe.